So, um, so I'm going to introduce myself, but I think it's kind of corny to talk about yourself in the third person. So I'm just going to say my name, then I'm going to go off the stage. You're going to applaud, I'm going to come back on. And then <laughs> so the next speaker is Till Gross. Thank you. <laughs> so during my everyday life, what I do is, or part of my job is, on the one hand, I, I coach entrepreneurs, I coach founders. And on the other hand, I go to big companies and corporations and give talks and workshops about confidence, about courage, and about fear. And I arrived at this job because on the one hand, I went to school. I studied psychology, got a degree in psychology. Then I worked with a lot of different therapists, a lot of different psychologists, read a lot of books, read a lot of studies. But probably the context where I've learned the most about courage and confidence and fear is by doing my own research. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. And it's not research in the traditional sense, like we do research in a lab or you send out questionnaires. But no, we actually went out and we talked to people in the real world. And a couple years ago, my good friend Stephanie and I, and she's an anthropologist, we went out and we interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people about fear and courage. So we asked them questions like, what is your biggest fear? What is courage for you? What is the most courageous thing that you've ever done? What is the fear that you had and that you've overcome? And because we asked people those questions, we thought it's kind of hypocritical to talk about fear and stay within our own comfort zone. So we created like an adventure out of it and did a hitchhike trip over 7,000 miles. We started in Buenos Aires, Argentina, hitchhiked all the way up to Lima and Peru, then flew to the States, started in San Francisco, hitchhiked to LA, and then all the way up to New York. And in between, we stayed with locals, whoever took us in. We interviewed everybody who didn't run away fast enough. <laughs> and everybody from slum kids in Argentina to executives in the States to housewives in Chile and cab drivers and truck drivers and everybody in between. And today I want to share one of those stories and one of those interviews, and this is the story of Mariana. And as I said before, we started in Buenos Aires, and we hitchhiked all the way up to Cordoba, a couple hundred miles north from Buenos Aires. And a local tech entrepreneur takes us in, his name is Nano, and we really hit it off, he's a great guy, we interview him, we stay with him for the night. The next day he calls up his girlfriend, Mariana, and he tells her, hey, I have those guys staying with me who interview people with fear and courage. They always look for new people to interview. Don't you want to come over? And she readily agrees. And I still remember up to this point when she walked into the door. It's very tall, very slender, very beautiful. And we start talking. And she's studying the States, flawless English, very educated, very smart, very intelligent, very accomplished and successful. She works very high up in a solar company. And then we sit her down, turn on the camera, turn on the microphone. Right behind us, the balcony, so the sun is like streaming in. Right here, sitting her boyfriend. And we ask her some genuine questions like, you know, where you're from, what's your name, to get her warmed up and comfortable in front of the camera. And then we ask the first question. What is courage for you? And she breathes in, breathes out. And in this very deliberate way, she says, well, I think courage is the greatest resource we have to overcome fear. Ooh, silence in the room. Everybody nods. And then she adds a couple more things, and it gets a little bit emotional. And then from there, we move to the next question. And the next question is, what is the most courageous thing that you've ever done? And at this point, she already teared up a little bit from the story before. And then she says, well, as a little precursor, well, what I'm going to say now is going to sound a little bit corny. And indeed, <laughs> it did sound a little bit corny. Because she replied, the most courageous thing that she's ever done was falling in love. And yes, it sounds a little bit cheesy. But then she added the following, that her entire life she was an introvert. And she always struggled with relationships. And when other people would do things naturally, or organically, she had to do it consciously. And she went that far that she described herself as emotional cripple. For this reason, something like falling in love was so unknown to her and scared her. 
And then in her own words, she said, because when you really open up and you get to this vulnerable spot, you can get either very, very happy or incredibly hurt. And it's a type of happiness you can only experience if it comes from this vulnerable spot. But it's also intensity of pain and hurt you can only experience if you first get to this vulnerable spot. And knowing this, and realizing this, and still taking this leap of faith and falling in love was the most courageous thing she's ever done. Now the two things we can learn from this about courage. And the first thing is that courage does not mean to be bold and confident, but instead courage means to be anxious, to be scared, to be insecure, and still take the step forward and take the leap of faith. You know, it's this artist who does not know how the audience will react, and he still comes up on stage and presents his art. It's this entrepreneur who knows that 90% of all businesses fail in the first three years, and she still starts a business. It's the person who comes to an event like this on their own and says hi to the person next to him, knowingly that Micah rejected. That's courage. And the second thing we can learn here is that certain experiences in certain parts of life we can only get access to when we are first willing to be vulnerable and really open up. And courage can help us to do this. For this reason, famous psychologist and researcher Robert Bisvestina from Portland University said, courage is the key to a rich, full, and successful life. And now I want to encourage you to take a little leap of faith. Maybe walk up to one of the bands shake the hand, go up to one of the volunteers and say thank you, or say hi to the person next to you. And if you're a little bit anxious or nervous about this, remember that courage is the greatest resource you have to overcome fear. Thank you.